All right, I, when I woke up this morning, I wanted to do a video uh, talking about the this millennial reign of Christ uh, that's not in the Bible. And for me, uh, you know, I look at, uh, you know, religions like Mormonism. They teach dispensationalism. This idea that, well, Jesus was a prophet, but then we needed another prophet. And so... We got Joseph Smith. The same thing with Islam. They claim to believe in Jesus, but they say Jesus is not God. God would not manifest in the flesh, and that uh, Jesus did not die. And uh, they so n another prophet needed to come along to give us the truth. In other words, Jesus doesn't give us the truth. And of course, we see that by the law came Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Okay, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And so you got Mormonisms or Mormons and Muslims saying that uh, there needed to be another prophet to come along because the truth died out, faded away, and uh, there needed to be another prophet to tell us the truth. All right. But Jesus says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. All right. So it, it's interesting. They just completely ignore, like uh, the Muslims in particular, uh, completely ignore uh, really Jesus Christ. And they put a lot of emphasis on rejecting everything that Paul said. And Mormons will say that the Bible is insufficient. That you can't believe everything in the Bible. They'll try to philosophize it that well, the Bible's right, but it's not understood correctly. So we need a 20-year-old pervert to tell us the truth about God Almighty. And that 20 year old pervert was Joseph Smith. All right, and essentially the doctrine they teach is that if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you don't believe in Mormonism, then you're gonna be resurrected still, but you're gonna be you're gonna come back to a planet and you're gonna be a black man. That's the essence of their doctrine. Now, if you're a Mormon, you're going to have a whole planet of women to have sex with. It's great. Now, uh, Islam, they only teach, what, 72 virgins? But Mormonism, you get a, a whole planet full of sexy babes. And you have sex all you want. And then, of course, the women, they'll have spiritual babies galore. Just it's just ridiculous nonsense, but people are caught up in it, and uh, the point being is that you see the same mentality with all these preachers preaching this dispensation of a thousand years coming after the Lord Jesus Christ, and let me show you something. So the idea is that here in Revelation 20, Jesus Christ is reigning and ruling on earth. Even though that's not mentioned anywhere in Revelation 20 until we get to verse 11. Alright, so again, you take Islam for example. They don't believe Jesus Christ is God. Right, so also these preachers, they are preaching the same thing. They say Jesus Christ is reigning and ruling on earth, and then a great white throne and him that sat, sat upon it comes from heaven and judges the whole world. All right, so if Jesus is here on earth, and then who's coming? Who's the great white throne and him that sat on it if Jesus is already here on earth? You can't say Jesus is God Almighty. 
He's on Earth. So there's another God or somebody other than Jesus coming down from heaven, a great white throne, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And I saw the dead and small and great stand before God. So the idea is the same. There's, there's a, this dispensation after Jesus comes and then there comes another God. And that's when the judgment's going to be, after the thousand years, which is a thousand years after Jesus returns. That's what they're teaching. So my question is, is this Joseph Smith coming down? Is this Muhammad coming down? I mean, if Jesus is already here on earth, can't be Jesus coming down. You see what I'm saying? It's There's a problem here with this teaching. A serious problem. It's amazing. It's absolutely incredible that so many people are teaching this stuff. But isn't that exactly what Jesus warns us of? Multiple times, over and over, in Matthew 24, <clears throat> Mark 13, and Luke 21. And they're asking him about the end of the world and the first thing he says is take heed that no man deceive you many shall come in my name saying Jesus is the Christ and shall deceive many well that's what these guys are saying they're saying Jesus is the Christ and they're preaching this false doctrine this false idea that Jesus is going to come down and reign for a thousand years as if he's not reigning right now if, and look, if Jesus Christ does not reign in your life right now, how can you rightly say that you're saved? Right? Many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. I had somebody today tell me, this morning, tell me that they actually said it was verse 10, but it's verse 13 that if you endure to the end you're gonna be saved that's how you get saved you endure to the end and they actually went so far to say that if you repent that's how your sin is covered so you sin every day and you repent every day and then you endure to the end that's how you get saved and look I'm telling you there's nothing in the Bible anywhere that suggests this idea that if you repent your sin is covered it's not. It's never it's never happened that way. It's never been that way. Repenting is not an offering to God to cover your sin. It's Jesus Christ that offered his body once for all. It's not repenting. And they went so far as to say that oh I used to believe this stuff too how many times I can't tell you how many times I've heard that oh I used to believe like you did but now I'm smart and you're still dumb that's brilliant just brilliant absolutely brilliant alright so right there Matthew 12, verse 10 okay so if I could go where's that verse at I used to be caught up in this lie. But I realize the truth. I hope you do too. Um, remember that James said he would show you his faith by his works. Okay, that's his works. All right. He's going to show his faith by his works. But what are the works of God? Oops, excuse me. Apologize for that right there. What are the works of God? Did I not show that? Or maybe that's a different video they're showing. Okay. Or talking about. So who cares? So we go to John. And they ask, then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? What are the works of God? And we got the works of James that he's going to show his faith. But what are the works of God? And 
Um, oh, goodness sakes. Where is that at? 28. And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. This is the work of God, that you believe in Jesus Christ. That's the work of God, to believe. It's always been about faith. Always. It's not a new thing. It's always been about faith. And Noah became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. It's always been about faith. Okay. And, of course, um, we must repent. That is enduring to the end. Just repenting. I repent. That's not an offering to God. I'm sorry. It's not. I don't know who in the world is teaching this stuff. But it's not even biblical in any sort of way at all. All right. So anyways, what was I talking about? I get fired up about that stuff. I get fired up about this stuff too. All right. So again, we go to Revelation 20. Oops. I will, what I do? I screwed this all up, didn't I? I apologize here. Let's get back to Revelation 20. So the idea that all these guys are teaching is that Jesus comes at the end of the world. That part's true, but then he reigns for a thousand years, and that part is not true. All right, and that part is easily or easily um, debunked. If we just go to Luke one, he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there shall be no end. Simple question for you, buddy. At the end of the thousand years, Jesus stops reigning. You can't get around that. And not only that, you have to say Jesus is not reigning right now. He just reigns for this short little time. It's like Jesus is a prophet of God. And so is Muhammad, a prophet of God. And so is Joseph Smith, a prophet of God. So he, Jesus has this little bit of, really in the big scheme, uh, big scheme of things, a uh, thousand years is just a drop in a bucket, man, when, and compared to eternity. So who is reigning before? Jesus who reigns after Jesus let's talk about that sort of stuff but no they just want to focus on this dispensation of Jesus on earth reigning over who because you got people dying during this thousand years in other words when Jesus comes it's not the end of the world even though Jesus says when he comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world you're just making Jesus out to be all kinds of a liar. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And then when he comes, it is the end of the world. And when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And he gathers together his elect and, his, and those that are not saved are destroyed forever. Revelation 1, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall will because of him. Even so, amen. This is all throughout the Bible that Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and it is the end of the world. But these guys, they say, No, hold on, it's not the end of the world. you still got a thousand years. And Jesus Christ is not reigning right now. He he only reigns for this window of the thousand years after he comes back. And so who, are there unsaved people when he's reigning for a thousand years? If there are not unsaved people, what's the point, man? Well, we're, we're just being trained. I mean, talk about it, at least. And then, and then after he's trained us, then he stops reigning. I mean, you really... 
got a ridiculous not you don't it, to me it's as if they haven't really put any thought into what they're teaching at all and how could you when you're not teaching what's in the bible nowhere in revelation 20 does it suggest that jesus is reigning for a thousand years it's very clear that it's we that are saved are reigning with him during this thousand years and why is that that's because we are born of the Spirit of God and we wait for his return whereby we are changed in a twinkling of an eye at the sound of the last trump we shall be changed from corruptible to incorruptible we uh, we that are saved uh, first the dead in Christ are lifted up and then we which are alive and remain shall be lifted up with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord <clears throat> and of course the enemy is gathered at our feet and just like this says that when Satan is loosed, he gathers together the unsaved. And they are at our feet, just like it says in Genesis 3. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and it shall bruise his heel. All right, so his heel is going to be bruised by stomping on the Satan's head. His heel is the heel of Jesus. And we see many times, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And like what we read in Revelation 3, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. They're going to come, be gathered at our feet while we're near, and fire is going to come down from God and devour them all. The wickedness and evilness of the world is going to be destroyed forever. And really that's what we're putting our hope in, right? That there be no more sin, no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. All these things are going to be former things. So they're going to be done away with. And that happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It is the end of the world. So what are these guys teaching, man? They're teaching a whole nother religion. I don't know, call it Mormonism? Call it uh, Islam? I, you know, I don't know what you call it, but it's not a, coming from the Bible. <laughs> the idea, Jesus Christ does not reign a thousand years. It's not in Revelation 20. It's not anywhere, but you see this over and over day after day day after day I begin to judge the wicked I'm going to open up the earth and men will say how did this happen I'm going to cause corporations to disappear says the Lord and there is going to be a natural disaster that's going to hit Disney World says the Lord right, yeah, so I don't, this guy here is He's talking about a natural disaster that's going to hit Disney World. That's just brilliant, man. What's that got to do with... Uh, the <laughs> in the millennial reign. God preparing the earth in the millennial reign. Well, what happens at the end of the world? Well there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth just like what we read whose face the heaven and the earth fled away alright so preparing the earth this earth is going to be destroyed that's how he's going to prepare it if we read <laughs> You know, I could do this all day, really. Um, in, was it First Peter, Second Peter? Somewhere in the Bible it says, if I could find it. 
I thought it used to say. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. This world is coming to an end. And it's going to be uh, utterly destroyed. It, not just the people and the power structures and all that sort of stuff. You know, the politicians, I should say. And um, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, it's that's not the only thing. The whole world is going to make... It even goes so far to say that every valley shall be brought down low. I'm not sure where that verse is, but I've heard... Or I've read it. Uh, oh, what is that? What verse is that? Now, every valley, or what? Not valley low. What am I talking about? Every mountain should be brought down. Oh goodness sakes! Uh, I probably can't find it. Probably can't find it. I thought it was in Joel. I thought it was in Jeremiah. It doesn't matter. It's there somewhere. I have to look it up. I need to read my Bible. That's all there is to it. But somewhere it talks about the the mountains being brought down, the valleys being lifted up, and uh, it doesn't matter. So I, the point is, the whole world is going to be uh, changed forever. All right. So I'm way off on the wording there. Um, doesn't matter. This is going to bother me, but I'll look this up later. In Luke, boy, I was way off, man, way off. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain hill shall be brought low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough way shall be made smooth. There's another verse, in, but it doesn't matter. Who cares? Point is... The world's going to change, man. The way we see the world today, it's going to be utterly changing. And I also believe that the world that was before the flood is much different than the world that we're living in right now. All right, and so on and so forth. But the point being is, uh, this God is not preparing the earth for this thousand-year reign. You're not God, and you're not going to be one ruling after. Jesus comes. I mean, this I, to me, that's what it looks to me that this guy is claiming to be God Almighty and that he's trying to get the people to prepare the earth for him to take it over. All right, that, and that has nothing at all to do with Revelation 20. Again, I feel like I need to say this every single day. Look, they lived and reigned with Christ. It's not saying Jesus reigns a thousand years. It's saying we reign with him. And that's happening right now. Right now we are priests of God and of Christ. We are a holy priesthood. Uh, a royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people that we might show forth the praises of him. That has brought us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Let's see how close I was on that one. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are a royal priesthood we are oops priest of king uh, a priest of God and of Christ right now we are priest of God and of Christ right now and we reign with Christ right now we that are saved again it, it, how can you say you're saved if you're not if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life right now all right, so so on, and I just want to talk about that. And to me, it's incredible. Day after day, almost hour after hour, people are t teaching this idea that Jesus Christ reigns a thousand. It's like another 
religion entirely. I talked about this fellow right here. He got a nice family, nice guy. But wow. It's like he's teaching another religion. And he's not the only one. Let's be fair about it. There are so many people who got this wrong. Does anybody got this right? The millennial reign of Christ right there tells me you're not trusting the Bible. You're trusting false teachers because the Bible never makes any mention of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. You're getting this from false teachers. This is the problem when you don't trust the Bible you hold in your hands. Let the Bible speak about the millennial reign. There is no millennial reign. Millennial reign of Christ is not in the Bible. It's like a whole nother religion. It's incredible. And of course I mentioned what well, if there's if there are not any unsaved people during this thousand years after Jesus returns, if there's not any unsaved people, um, then what's the point? So let's say there are unsaved people. Well, you're basically telling people right now, just wait until Jesus comes, and then you'll see for yourself, and then you can start believing. All right, and that's just utterly insane. I wonder if people even read the Bible sometimes. I really... I really do. Oh, what is that? What's that story about doubting Thomas? Oh, goodness, I can't remember. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So you're going against what Jesus says and you're telling people, unsaved people, to wait until Jesus comes and then start believing. Well, what I'm going to tell you is it's too late. Jesus comes today and you don't believe, that's it. There are no more second chances. You're lost forever. And there's nothing worse in your life than being lost forever. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to believe, to be saved. To have the Spirit of God. To be born of God. Okay. So there's no mention at all of uh, this idea that Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. And then so you're teaching there's going to be unsaved people after the return of Jesus. Okay, so what are they? Zombies? Are they... What are they, man? What what <laughs> are they dead people? Are they living people? Are they still in the flesh? Are you still in the flesh? Are they still in their like in our flesh that we're in right now? And then you're in your glorified flesh and you're sticking your finger out and reigning and ruling over them, you sinner. You doggone sinner. I'm going to throw you in jail, I'm going to whip you, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to torture you, I'm going to do whatever I want with you because I'm equal with God. Is that is that what's going to happen in your mind? Uh, what's happening? I mean, really, talk about that. You've got unsaved people living with saved people in this thousand year period? Well, that's just brilliant. It really is. Because isn't that happening right now? Do we not have unsaved people living with saved people right now? I think about it, man. Think about it. And, uh, you know, look. Uh, you know, I could go on and on. But the bottom line is, there's no mention of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. You can't ignore that, man. You can't ignore that. What? Why don't you just come out and say, Jesus Christ is a liar. And I'm here to tell you what the truth is. Isn't that what Muhammad did? Isn't that what Joseph Smith did? Because this very clearly 
is Jesus Christ telling us that when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And all the tribes of the earth shall mourn because they weren't ready. They weren't expecting it. They thought they could be saved. And then they're going to realize they waited too long. They listen to you rather than believing in reading the Bible. Right? Except for those days be shortened, no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. I mean, right there, nobody's getting saved after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, so if you, if you believe that, then you can't say there are unsaved people living after Jesus comes. And then if there are not any unsaved people, then what's the point? Who, you, who are you reigning and ruling over? Who are you sticking your finger out at? I mean, come on. Is that really what is that why you believe it? Because you want to have dominion over another man? Is that why you believe and teach this idea? And so we go, let's go to Luke 21. And then I'll close it out. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I know what I'm looking for now. So just uh, I want to make this one last point here. Um, men's hearts failing them for fear and looking and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven uh, the whole earth is going to mourn men's hearts are failing them for fear and seeing what's happening and they're going to freak out and understandably so and you, uh, you're familiar with the weeping and gnashing of teeth uh, but the kingdom but the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth I mean, this weeping and gnashing of teeth and the whole earth mourning uh, it's going to be um, you're going to see this Well, how do I put this? Well, you're going to see it from up in the air. That the whole earth, the whole, you know, all the unsaved people are going to be in absolute agony. Absolute agony. Because they're, it's going to come to them, the realization that they were wrong to not trust in the Lord Jesus Christ it's going to be a terrible tragic moment in our life when all the unsaved people come to the full realization that they were wrong about our Lord Jesus Christ alright and so begs the question if you understand that why are you being wrong about this? Why aren't you being right about this? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world.